Have you ever thought that the fresh air you're breathing right now might once have been released from millions of industrial smokestacks around the world? It sounds unbelievable, but that's the reality of a rapidly developing industrial era. Global studies show that 99% of the world's population lives in polluted air, and more than 7 million people every year suffer from respiratory diseases caused by poor air quality. In response, advanced emission control technologies are paving the way toward a more sustainable future, one that safeguards life every single day. And in this video, you'll discover how humanity is turning smoke and dust into clean energy, a breakthrough redefining green technology in the 21st century. Clean air is not only a vital human necessity, it's also a global industry worth hundreds of billions of dollars. The market for pollution control solutions has already surpassed 150 billion USD, reflecting the rapid growth of the green economy worldwide. About 65% of large industrial plants worldwide have now integrated on-site emission control systems instead of installing individual components separately. This percentage is projected to exceed 90% by 2035, as technology costs continue to decline and global environmental standards tighten. As a result, emission treatment is no longer considered a secondary process. It has become an essential part of modern factory operations, marking the beginning of a new era of clean manufacturing and sustainable growth. In modern factories, the very first step after combustion, heating, or chemical reactions is to collect all the exhaust gases generated and direct them to a central treatment system. The goal is not only to protect the environment, but also to maintain stable pressure, temperature, and gas composition, ensuring the downstream treatment units operate efficiently. At each emission source, such as boilers, dryers, metallurgical furnaces or chemical reactors, local exhaust hoods are installed directly above the source. Each hood is designed according to aerodynamic principles to capture the entire polluted gas stream without causing pressure drops or drawing in clean air. The collected exhaust typically contains SO2 from sulfur in the fuel, NOx produced in high temperature combustion zones, and CO and CO2, byproducts of the burning process. Depending on the production type, the gas may also contain acid vapors, fine dust, or heavy metal fumes. Once captured, the gases are conveyed through heat-resistant, corrosion-proof metal ducts, usually made of carbon steel coated with ceramic or 316 all stainless steel, capable of continuous operation at up to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Inside the ducts, temperature and pressure sensors constantly monitor for any fluctuations. At the end of the duct network is the industrial-induced draft fan, a negative pressure blower that keeps the airflow stable throughout the system. Each fan can operate at around 200 degrees Fahrenheit, handling more than 40,000 cubic meters of air per hour. Powerful enough to draw gases from multiple sources and push them toward the dust separation, SO2 removal, and NOx reduction stages that follow. After being collected, the exhaust gases leave the production areas at temperatures reaching 400 to 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Before entering the dust filtration and chemical treatment systems, the gas flow must be cooled and stabilized to protect the equipment and ensure optimal treatment efficiency. The cooling process takes place in a heat exchanger or a quenching tower. Here, cooling water or neutralizing solution is sprayed into a fine mist coming into direct contact with the hot gases and rapidly absorbing heat. In closed-loop systems, cooling is achieved using shell and tube or plate-type heat exchangers, where gas and water flow in opposite directions, maintaining a steady outlet temperature of 140 to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Beyond reducing temperature, this stage also helps condense water vapor and remove part of the fine dust from the exhaust stream. Precise temperature control is critical, if it's too high, fabric filters and catalytic membranes downstream may be damaged. If it's too low, condensation can cause corrosion and clogging in the ducts. With automated control systems, temperature and coolant flow sensors are continuously monitored 
to ensure the gas leaving the cooling unit remains within safe limits before moving on to subsequent processes such as dust filtration, SO2 scrubbing, and NOx reduction. After being cooled, the exhaust gas still contains a significant amount of coarse dust and suspended solid particles generated during combustion, grinding, or material heating processes. Before entering fine filtration units, the gas is routed through a primary dust separator, typically a cyclone separator or an inertial settling chamber. Inside the cyclone, the gas is drawn in tangentially, creating a strong centrifugal vortex. Dust particles, which are heavier than air, are thrown outward by the centrifugal force, collide with the chamber wall, and slide down the conical shell into a collection hopper at the bottom. Here, the dust and ash are gathered into a continuous dry stream that can be directed to a screw conveyor or storage silo for treatment, recycling, or safe disposal. Meanwhile, you know, the cleaner air spirals upward through the central vortex and exits from the top outlet. Thanks to its conical design and precisely calculated gas velocity, the system can remove 70 to 90% of coarse dust particles larger than 10 microns without requiring high energy or complex filter media, effectively reducing the load on the downstream fine filtration stages. After leaving the cyclone, the exhaust gas still contains fine dust particles smaller than 10 microns light airborne particles that are difficult to remove using conventional mechanical methods. To capture these, the gas is directed into an electrostatic precipitator, one of the most efficient technologies in modern industrial air pollution control. Inside the unit, the gas passes through discharge electrodes and collection plates arranged in parallel. When a high voltage direct current of 20 to 70 kilovolts is applied, the discharge electrodes generate a corona discharge that ionizes the surrounding air, transforming neutral gas molecules into positive and negative ions. These ions attach themselves to the suspended dust particles, giving them an electrical charge. Under the influence of the electric field, the charged particles migrate toward the oppositely charged collection plates. Upon contact, they adhere to the plate surface and gradually form a thin dust layer. The automatic wrapping system periodically vibrates the plates, causing the accumulated dust to fall into hoppers at the bottom for collection. Through this process, dust removal efficiency can reach 98 to 99 percent, even for particles only a few microns in size. Moreover, because it uses no fabric filters or water, the electrostatic precipitator offers high durability, stable operation, and minimal pressure loss, making it ideal for cement plants, thermal power stations, metallurgical operations, and heavy chemical industries. When the gas stream leaves the electrostatic precipitator, it is almost transparent but still contains dissolved toxic gases such as SO2, NOx, HCl, and HF. These corrosive and acid-forming compounds are removed in the wet absorption tower or wet scrubber, the core stage of the purification system. Here, the hot gas enters the tower from the bottom and rises upward, meeting a fine mist of alkaline solution sprayed from multiple nozzle layers. The ultra-fine droplets spread evenly across the tower's cross-section, enveloping and neutralizing acidic gas molecules on contact. The scrubbing solution typically contains lime water, sodium hydroxide, or magnesium hydroxide, depending on the plant's process requirements. During impact and dissolution, SO2 and other acid gases are converted into neutral salts and moist sludge, which gradually settles at the base of the tower. The sludge is collected in a recirculation tank, where water is separated and the remaining effective solution is reused. The purified gas then passes through a demister, which captures fine liquid droplets to prevent them from escaping into the atmosphere. The system operates fully automatically, with sensors controlling temperature, flow rate, and pH levels. Thanks to its multi-stage spray design and the rapid reactivity of alkaline solutions, the wet scrubber achieves an acid gas removal efficiency of over 95%, ensuring that the treated air meets emission standards before moving on to the final stage. After the exhaust gas has been cleaned of dust and neutralized in the wet scrubber, the most critical remaining pollutants are nitrogen oxides, NOx, 
A group of gases formed in high-temperature combustion zones and a direct cause of photochemical smog, respiratory diseases, and ozone layer pollution. To remove NOx, modern plants employ a selective reduction system known as DNOx, which works by transforming these oxides into completely harmless substances. In the Selective Catalytic Reduction SCR system, the most widely used technology today, the exhaust gas is first brought to its optimal reaction temperature before passing through a catalyst chamber filled with honeycomb-shaped catalyst blocks. At this stage, a small amount of ammonia or urea solution is injected into the gas stream. When the mixture contacts the catalyst surface, the NOx molecules are broken apart and chemically converted into nitrogen and water vapor, two naturally occurring and non-toxic components of the atmosphere. With this catalytic process, NOx removal efficiency can exceed 90%, even when treating large gas volumes. After the removal of dust, SO2, and NOx, the remaining exhaust gas consists mainly of nitrogen, oxygen, water vapor, and carbon dioxide. While CO2 is not immediately toxic, it is a major greenhouse gas. That's why many modern plants now include a specialized process to capture and separate CO2 before the clean gas is released through the smokestack. This technology operates alongside traditional pollution control systems, serving as the plant's final carbon defense line. The gas is directed into a tall CO2 absorption tower, a cylindrical column filled with packing materials that increase the contact surface area. From the top of the tower, an amine-based solvent, most commonly monoethanolamine MEA, is sprayed as a thin film or fine mist. As the gas rises and the solvent flows downward in countercurrent motion, CO2 dissolves into the liquid and bonds chemically with the amine, forming a CO2-rich solution. The nearly CO2-free gas then moves on to the monitoring stage. The CO2-rich solution is pumped into a regeneration tower, where it is heated using low-pressure steam. Under these conditions, CO2 is released again in pure gaseous form, while the regenerated amine solvent is cooled and returned to the absorption tower, creating a closed absorption regeneration cycle that runs continuously around the clock. The purified CO2 gas is sent to a compression and treatment unit, where it is multi-stage compressed, dehydrated, and converted into liquid or supercritical form. Once separated in the regeneration tower, the pure CO2 enters a high-pressure compression system that brings it to a supercritical state. During multi-stage compression, the gas is repeatedly cooled and dehydrated to eliminate any residual moisture that could cause corrosion. When a stable pressure is reached, the CO2 is pumped into dedicated pipelines leading to storage sites. These storage facilities are typically located in deep geological formations or depleted oil and gas reservoirs whose natural sealing structures can securely contain CO2 for long periods. Subsurface sensors continuously monitor pressure and temperature to ensure that the gas remains trapped and does not leak back to the surface. Through this final process, the captured CO2 is completely isolated from the atmosphere, significantly reducing the plant's overall carbon footprint. Before the purified gas is released through the smokestack, the entire emission control system is monitored by CEMS, Continuous Emission Monitoring System, an automated network of instruments operating 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The system is installed directly on the smokestack or at the final exhaust duct using infrared, ultraviolet, laser, and electrochemical sensors to continuously analyze every component of the gas stream. CEMS tracks concentrations of SO2, NOx, CO, CO2, and O2, along with fine particulate matter, PM, temperature, pressure, and flow rate. The data collected by the sensors are processed by a central controller, then transmitted to the distributed control system, DCS room, and simultaneously reported online to environmental authorities as required by law. In addition to real-time monitoring, the system includes a calibration unit that automatically adjusts sensor accuracy at set intervals to maintain measurement precision. Whenever any parameter exceeds its threshold, CEMS triggers an alert, 
prompting operators to adjust the scrubber, denox unit, or dust filtration system to restore safe operating conditions. Through SEMS, the plant maintains full real-time control over emission quality, ensuring that every cubic meter of gas released into the atmosphere meets both national emission standards and the facility's own safety and performance requirements. From the initial stream of hot gas filled with dust, SO2, NOx, and CO2, the treatment process transforms it into clean air ready to be released into the environment. Through each technological layer, cooling to stabilize temperature, cyclones for coarse dust removal, electrostatic filters for fine particles, wet scrubbers for acid gas neutralization, denox units for nitrogen oxide reduction, and CO2 capture modules for the final emissions. Every stage reshapes the entire flow of gas. By the time the air reaches the smokestack, what remains is almost entirely nitrogen, oxygen, and water vapor. The silent result of an intricate, precisely engineered system. These machines may not make noise, yet they are the unseen force allowing modern industries to operate sustainably while greatly minimizing their environmental footprint. If you'd like to keep exploring stories of engineering journeys like this one, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe so you won't miss our upcoming videos.